Um, the, the presentation she's doing is, um, uh, is, is, is about the floods in Uganda and how the cooperation, coordination between the clusters, the WASH cluster and the health cluster, actually came together and, and managed to um, make, make things work. And uh, you'll see what happens as we, as we go through. Um, for those of you who know Uganda, uh, this was all in the sort of northern section of Uganda. And of course, the northern section of Uganda has had uh, about 23 years of, of, of conflict. Uh, there, there's lots of IDP camps. Uh, there was all sorts of uh, things going on because of the uh, because of the, the conflict in that particular area. In 2005, uh, there was a cluster uh, system was developed by the UN, and in 2007, the cluster was set up in in Uganda, uh, including the WASH cluster, the health cluster, and a number of the other ones led by by UNICEF. For those of you who don't know what the cluster is, and I'm sure I don't have to go through um, things, it's about coordination. It came out after the tsunami and, and the Darfur, and I was actually the first cluster lead uh, for the WASH cluster for UNICEF, based in New York, and set that up. Um, and it's about bringing the agencies together, the donors together, the, uh, the governments together, so that we can actually work with cooperation. I heard it so much today, why aren't we working together? And the, core, the, the, the work of the cluster is actually to try and make it work together. It's not easy uh, because we all have a different things, but it's actually about trying to be systematic. It's about a predictable approach when things happen. Um, and it's, it's about um, bringing together the main sectors of, of how we respond in an emergency. The clusters are, there are 10 or 11 clusters led mostly by UN agencies. The education cluster is led between UNICEF and Save the Children Fund. Uh, the WASH cluster is led by, by UNICEF, um, but it has a huge number of, of cluster members. These, actually, these cluster members are actually the ones that are in Uganda, because at a global level, uh, people like MSF and, and uh, ICRC are sort of observer members, even though ICRC do, do come to the meetings. So this was what it looked like in Uganda before the, 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 the floods happened. Of course, I don't want to describe what the floods are. I'm sure you know what happens. But of course, when it does happen, and it happened in 2007, it creates an enormous uh, amount of chaos everywhere. People's homes get washed away because they're mostly made out of mud and wattle and what have you. People's lives uh, suffer all the way across the thing. And this, of course, is on top of the conflict that had been going on for the last years. And that many of the camps, the, the displaced camps, they were flooded as well as the communities around. So the word there was chaos. Of course, it was chaos. It was chaos. The community, everybody is shouting. Um, of course, you've got a certain number of, of NGOs who were already there in the, in the cluster, and the, uh, the response was led by OCHA, the, the UN agency, uh, in conjunction with the NGOs. And of course, it's always worth to mention that the donors like ECHO and DFID in that sort of crisis are always very, very supportive of it. What's the outcome? Well, the outcome was that, you know, that, that, that Huge number, 300,000 people were affected in the different regions in, in the north of Uganda. Um, that included, say, communities, and it also involved the, the uh, displaced camps um, and schools and what have you. And the effect was that over 100 people were killed. Um, thousands and thousands of people got displaced. Um, 200,000 people needed shelter because they'd lost their homes, roads were blocked, uh, floods disrupted all the basic services, as you can imagine, as we know from all the way around. Health services and schools get completely affected, livelihoods get affected, um, animals get lost, um, and as I said, the mud houses, a lot of them get destroyed. So you've got the river sources were grossly polluted, the drinking wells, 
uh, get contaminated, the boreholes get submerged, households and, uh, and institutional latrines collapse. Um, the whole thing is, is, is an absolute disaster for and ready for uh, all sorts of things to happen. And as Labby has put down there, the looming possibility of a cholera outbreak. I won't go over what cholera is because you know uh, from, from that. But there was a lot of work being done between the, particularly on the WASH cluster, on surveys right through, backed up by the Government Water Authority um, and the Minister of Water. The Minister of Water was very supportive. She was uh, uh, a great supporter of the cluster. She was well known to UNICEF. Uh, the Minister of Water at that time was also the leader of the water ministers in Africa. Uh, so, so, so she was a very well uh, informed lady about how, this, how the system should operate. Uh, and she was very supportive. The flood response, even though uh, the initial kicked in, um, no matter how good your minister is, unless your structures are, are excellent, that doesn't always work quite so well. Um, the cluster, the individual clusters kicked off. Um, a new cluster was brought in at that time, the logistics cluster run by WFP to uh, bring in and open up roads um, and, and uh, bring, bring a lot of the, of the goods that was, that was being air freighted and transported in. Um, and new clusters in the particular flooded areas were set up, wash, health, protection, um, and the issues behind that um, has been mentioned already. Um, of course, in the first phase, this is what happens. Um, exact figures, so the effects are established. Um, it's about putting together joint assessments with the government. It's about getting uh, funding put through on how to see how that works. On the flood participation, 24 out of the 50 members of the, of the agencies were actively involved um, and started putting in work and uh, WASP response continued, of course, one of the main responses of all the agencies is that of non-food item distribution, of soap and jerry cans and what have you. Uh, safe water, uh, with, with, particularly with tablets, boreholes were chlorinated, boreholes were rehabilitated, um, purification units came in, and you find that the uh, equipment for water quality testing was set up because that wasn't adequate. Um, refresher test is in water quality testing for ministry staff. Water quality laboratories were set up by THW, the German agency, uh, which was open to all the others. And of course, in any flood situation, almost any emergency situation these days, hygiene promotion is seen as absolutely crucial. Um, nearly 3,000 health workers teams were trained under the health promoter schemes. Um, and that... Uh, is, is very, very important. Sanitation, of course, is, is equally important because it's a sanitation which actually creates all the pollution that goes around. Um, and 3,000 new latrines were constructed. Schools were provided with wash stuff. Um, and on the whole, they said the potential um, of that sort of thing was, is, again, all the time, there wasn't any cholera at that time. Everybody was talking about it. The media was talking about it. The ministries were talking about it. Um, but the, the reality was that at that time there wasn't. Schools uh, had, uh, were badly affected and new latrines were put into schools. And a lot of it is driven by information management. We've heard again today quite a lot about information management in the WASH cluster. There's a whole section of, on now of volunteers and people response that we put in uh, that will put out uh, an information management structure um, which is connected into OCHA, and that brings out details of what's been happening around the working groups, what's happening on the ground, and what's happening in different places. And, of course, the coordination. The why and how and where is, is how this thing works. Um, uh, came up today, why don't the agencies, why don't people coordinate together? This is what the cluster about is about. It's about ensuring that all the affected are catered for, that actors are working in according to international norms and standards, and they're avoiding trying to avoid duplications and gaps, um, and they're trying to work together with the government to ensure that 
everybody is, is hit at whatever level. Um, as the levels, it said two levels, one in Kampala at the capital, which is where you have the thing, and one at a district level. Coordination from the government side is, is a sensitive thing, and obviously the clusters have to work very, very closely with the government. If you don't do that, you're in trouble, and the government will feel that you're, as an NGO or as the UN, as the international community, are taking over their role. So it is very, very key that your coordination is done between the cluster and the ministry, and that the ministry and the minister and the ministry staff are in control of the process and not overruled by the process. And if that happens, it works very well. Um, and that includes right down to a district government level where that has to happen. To embark and make this thing work, the health and the wash clusters came together for coordination, embarked on the strategic intercluster coordination from the beginning in order to reduce any negative impacts, health impacts. That the WASH and the health cluster members regularly attended each other's meetings and that the weekly health data was shared with the WASH cluster and used as a basis for guiding interventions into the field, which is very, very important. It doesn't always happen. Even in the big major emergencies, you don't always get that cooperation. So the result of, the, of, of that coordination is that everybody was uh, immediately sort of resources were, were shared, uh, bacteriological testing kits and members that were, was, was, was deployed out, new wash cluster coordinators were recruited uh, and brought in so that they could be targeted about the response. Uh, community participation, again, and this is very, very important, if the community feel that they're not being involved, they're not taking over, and you're not looking after their interests. They will, they will object to it, and, and, and this is where it is very, very important. And I mean, um, in the last thing, it was mentioned about the safety and security of women, particularly with sanitation and particularly with washing. That, in all emergencies, is a very, very important sector, in camp, in, particularly in camps where you cite sanitation is absolutely crucially important and in the areas that you find that that wasn't taken in, you find that lots of women get raped, you get lots of, lots of uh, sexual harassment, you get lots of problems. So that's a very, very important lesson that the humanitarian world absolutely works to and they know that. Funding is also obviously very important. Um, the way that we get a lot of immediate funding is through the SURF. The SURF is a UN mechanism for uh, response um, it has to be worked through a UN agency. The WASH cluster is connected to UNICEF. UNICEF has access to the SURF. If you're not a UN agency, you don't have access to the SURF funding. Um, so uh, in this case, we can work with UNICEF and OCHA, and the SURF funding comes through, um, and that money gets immediately fed into the NGOs. Uh, OCHA also got the, the she said here, Brenda, the stops that stops that were set up in, or in Italy connected to WFP and that you can bring in. Um, also, the central government was initially unwilling, but um, it, it actually, in the end, brought out. So, so, so let's look at your enhancing factors. Uh, the existing presence of the UN and the NGOs in the country. The presence of the clusters in the country. Uganda was implementing the cluster approach and in supportive of it. Flexibility and active participation by cluster members and partners, NGOs, and local NGOs, because that local NGO issue is very, very important. Otherwise, you find it's an international NGO and a local NGO divide, and that is important that you don't get that. Um, good co cluster coordination in Kampala and the district, strong cooperation. Oops, get back. Strong co uh, co collaboration between the health and the education clusters because a lot of schools were involved and therefore you have to bring in the education factor. And of course in schools, as already been mentioned, there's water and sanitation issues to do with that as well. Enabling government by the government, uh, by the, the enabling environment by the government, uh, existing government structures and districts um, and health teams um, can be worked with, uh, commercially viable private sector, NFIs and what have testing equipment was also being made available within inside the country. So you have a certain amount of capacities for this response. Uh, the cost of the problems by the government was good. 
even though in the beginning it was, it, maybe it was being slow, but it was actually worked out. The district the government officials were willing. Again, if they weren't strong technically, they were very, very uh, enthusiastic to try and make things work. This is where your cluster is in a position to be able to, to do more training and work. Archer and the Flash Appeal, excellent uh, willingness members of diversity projects, creation of new logistics cluster, um, which aids the logistics side, the provision of air charters, whatnot, unlocks a lot of uh, logistical problems. Challenges, because no matter, no matter how good you think your situation is, you have challenges like unreliable data and accurate data in the beginning um, from the gov government uh, district offices, uh, sometimes ready to inflate that data. Technical construction of appropriate latrines in communities and in schools. Um, sometimes that doesn't always work how you want it. Need for additional technical training, on, particularly on disinfection, uh, rehabilitation of boreholes, water quality monitoring, and water testing uh, is, is things. Funding in the beginning sometimes is inadequate, and uh, sometimes the government is a poor, f has, you know, has, is a poor funder, even though uh, initially... Uh, eventually, the government actually did f fund quite a lot of activities. Inadequate staffing is oh, and capacity of the government is always a problem. Districts reluctant to use government funds due to lack of clear guidelines. Um, all the things which are there with inside of your community in any, any uh, country, when an emergency happens, all gets thrown up into the air and uh, brings forward. Coordination... Uh, delayed uh, arrival of the new WASH cluster coordinator in the district, and then when that district, when that person was put in, he had a, a range of duplicate roles, not just a not just a, a dedicated function. Uh, new players coming into the cluster, uh, unaware how the cluster approach worked. This happened a lot in in uh, Haiti, uh, the Haiti earthquake. Uh, there was a lot of people there had unheard of and did not know how the cluster works and how it was supposed to. Uh, and in the recovery phase, the second phase, of course, the strategy was virtually left to the government to handle. Um, and the funding in this phase was also problematic with the donors because they didn't have, uh, they didn't have uh, a, a foresight on what happened. So to finish off, what if, this is what, how Abbott's finished, what if there was no cluster, and in the countries where there was no cluster, would the health people and the WASH people uh, be ready enough to work together? What if the health and WASH cluster decided to work in their own grounds, and I've been in many emergencies where that's actually happened, and one has had to go to the head of the health cluster and say, hey, you guys, we need to work together. Um, and I had to do that when I was cluster lead in quite a lot of emergencies, particularly in the beginning. So, there's, uh, and, and then there's no funding available. Uh, what if happened that thing? So there are lots of lessons learned fr from how that, but the, but the health and the wash clusters in this case really strengthened the health outcomes. And that's 